Welcome back aliens. In the earlier video we have done with the setup of subquery. Now this time we will be writing a code and we will make it work. Now the project which we got is a blank project, right? Not exactly blank, but then it is doing the stuff which they want to do it. Now we have to do what we want, right? So first of all, if you look at this schema GraphQL, we have all these fields which are field one, field two. We don't want this, right? We want the fields which we want to fetch. Uh, so we'll start editing from here itself. So the first thing I want to change here is I don't want to go for the starter entity. I want to name it as extrinsic. And then I want to change the field. So ID is compulsory, so we'll not mention that here. So ID is compulsory. The next field I want to fetch here is block is block hash, block hash. And the type of block hash will be string. The next thing we need is block height, and it will be also of type string. In fact, we'll remove this part. Next we need is origin, which will be of type string as well. So we need four things. We need ID, block hash, block height, and origin. Now what is a block height? So if you remember when we went to the uh, Polkadot website or the Explorer, this is the height I'm talking about. So every time you have a new block, that number is a height. Okay, and if I go back, and every block will be having a hash, we want to fetch that as well. Cool. So basically for every schema, we need to map it with a JS file to make it work. Now how do we generate that JS file? It's very simple. I will say npm run script. And the script I want to run, if you remember, we have in package.json, the script I want to run is this, code gen. So I will go back here and I will say code gen. I will say enter. Now it is generating the files and where you will find it, this is a folder where we have this. So if I open types in models, you can see we have extrinsic, this is what we wanted. And if I open this, it will have all the fields which are mentioned in that schema. So we have ID, we have block hash, we have block height, we have origin, and the methods to make it work. So we are going to use save to save it. Otherwise we have remove, get, uh, create, but then we are going to use the save method. Now how do we create an entity? So you know, if you are not familiar with entities, so it is very famous in the world of programming as well, example Java or any other language. So if you want to store some kind of object into database, we directly make them as entity. In database, you might be knowing this concept as entity relationship. So those are entities. Uh, this is almost same. There. Okay. So basically, we need we need to get this uh, extrinsic, and there is also some changes in this index.js. If you can see index.js, it is importing um, uh, not JS TS because this is type TypeScript. It is importing the models, right? And that's why it is working. Okay, that's the first step we have done. The next thing I want to check is this project.yaml. Now, of course, we don't want everything from here. What are the things we want? We want to focus only on block. So if you just want to focus on block, not on the event, not on this call, just remove it. As simple as that, right? <laughs> I know that looks crazy, but that's how you do it. And just remember one thing. Sometime when you pull this project, they might be having chain ID and Genesis hash. If you have both in this network, remove one, either remove Genesis hash or remove chain ID. If you have both, it will give you error. And I've faced that a lot, okay? So make sure that you only have chain ID or Genesis hash. Okay, that's the only change we need to make here, nothing else. The next thing I want to change is this mapping handler. Now since, if you remember, the first thing you have to change is we are not working with starter entity, we are working with extrinsic. So we'll mention that, okay? We'll say save. Uh, so we are working with Polkadot, we are working with extrinsic. And then the only thing we want to change is block. We don't want to work with event and call, we can just simply remove it. So I don't want to work with handle event, I don't want to work with call, just the handle block. So basically every time it, it will create a new block, it will, it will call this handle. Okay, and we'll not be using the existing code, but let me just remove that. So basically what are the things we need? So the first thing we need to get is the block hash. Remember in the schema.graphql we are fetching the hash and then with that hash we need to also get hold on this height and the origin. So what I will do is I will say const block hash is equal to block dot block. So basically this is the block object we are using here. So in this block object you have a block inside of it. With that block, I will say, I want to fetch the header because that's where you will find the hash. And in this header, you will be having the hash. 
and I want to convert that hash into string because the format we have defined is string. Now, once we got the block hash, now it's time to create a, let's wait. So let's use a promise here, promise.all. So again, with the help of block dot block, and we'll fetch all the extrinsic. As I mentioned, block will have events, extrinsics and stuff. So we'll be using extrinsics. Okay, extrinsics dot map. Now with this, it will throw the blocks one by one. So we'll say async. And we'll save that, we'll pick up one extrinsic at a time. You can see it will throw all the extrinsics. We want to fetch one at a time. And with that one extrinsic, what I will do is, I'll perform some operation on that extrinsic. And we'll give a semicolon here. Okay. Now, there's one more thing. We want to get only those extrinsics which are signed. So basically there are two things, signed transaction, unsigned transaction. Uh, so we'll only focus on the signed one. So we'll check if, the extrinsic dot is signed. That's how you check if it is signed or not. If it is signed, then we'll perform some operation. We'll say const origin equal to, we'll fetch the origin first. So we'll say extrinsic because see all the data which is there, it will be coming in this extrinsic. And with that, we'll fetch the origin. So we'll say extrinsic dot signer dot to string. That's how you get who is the origin. Then we'll fetch the entity so why do we need this entity? So basically when you fetch all these values, you're fetching your uh, block hash, you're fetching your block height, you're fetching your origin, you will assign everything to an entity and then you will save the entity as it is. So let's create an entity first. It will be a extrinsic type entity and it will relate it to this particular hash, extrinsic dot hash dot to string. Okay, so we got two string. And then uh, once you got the entity object, we'll assign data one by one. So first we'll assign the block hash and the block hash will be coming from this block hash because that is what we have already fetched. The next thing I want to fetch is entity dot block height. Now this block height will be coming from the block itself. So we'll say block dot block dot header dot number dot two big int. And then we have to also specify the origin. So we'll say entity dot origin is equal to, we have already fetched the origin part. So we'll directly assign it here. And once you got all the value, there's an error here. There's, is there a spelling mistake? Okay, block height is of type string. Is it of type string? Okay. Block height is of type big int, not string. So we'll make the changes there. And since we are ch changing the schema, we have to make sure that you also change the mapping file, I mean the extrinsic type, and you can see it was, it should now be big int. Okay, that's done. And once you have all this value, it's time to say save. So I will say await entity dot save. And that's done. So basically this, till this point, we were able to create this mapping file and we are only doing for the block handle, right? We're not doing for other stuff. And we have done, the, done a change here as well. Instead of block height being string, I've made it big int because that makes sense. The height, it's a height, it's a number. And then, then the mapping uh, project.yaml, we are, okay, everything looks good. Now what's next step? Now once you have your project ready, once you have your code ready, the next step is to build this project. Now how do you build? Again, the same step. So for running the script, you will say run script. And the thing you will do is the command you have, you have to fire is build. So to say build, it will take some time to build. And you can see the building is done. Can we see the building here? No. Okay. Now, once we have the build ready, it's time to run the project. Now to run the project, we have to make sure that you explore the Docker file first, because when you say it will run the service, what type of service it will run. So basically it will try to index all the file and it will fetch the data. It will index the file and it will fetch the data into a Postgres database, which will be running on your machine. Uh, so make sure that you have a decent machine before running this thing. Otherwise, you can directly deploy on the subquery network and you don't even have to run on your machine because it basically consumes a lot of memory and the CPU power. Mm -hmm. So basically, it will download, uh, it will run a Postgres Docker. It will also run a subquery node on your machine and it will also run the GraphQL engine. So basically, I mean, think about this. It will run all the service on your machine. Okay, so you have to also make sure that your Docker is running. As of now, my Docker is not running. So let's see what happens if your Docker is not running and if you hit this. So to start the Docker, we'll again run the same things, run a script and that's start Docker. I will say enter. So you can see we got the error, right? Because the Docker is not running. So you have to make sure that your Docker is started and it should give you a way of showing that it is running. 
So my, you can see my Docker is starting now. It will be, it will start running in some time. Okay, now it is started, I guess. Now it's still not there. Let me just clear the screen first. Docker started. Let me just say start. And this time, the moment you do that, it will pull the images. You can see it, will, it is pulling Postgres, subquery node, and GraphQL engine. Okay, it is creating the Postgres instance as well. It will take some time. And then it's running. You can see that the node is running. And if you can see the command line, what is happening here? It is fetching the block. The block fetching started from one. And we have seen that on the Polkadot Explorer, right? We have around 16 million. I'm not even sure the number. It's a very big number. So it is indexing 100 blocks at a time. And as of now, it is indexed only 300, 1400 block. OK, so it is running. Uh, that's a good thing. Now, how do you verify? How do we run this thing? So you have to go to localhost colon 3000, and this is what you need to specify. So basically, we are running a GraphQL query. So we are, fetching, we are filing a query, and all the extrinsics, I mean, all the blocks, basically. And this is, so basically, we are trying to fetch the first 10, and we are only fetching node ID. And first, we have to make sure that this is working. So when you run this code, I mean, if you run this query, you can see we got the first 10 IDs. OK, but then we just don't want ID, right? What else we want? We want the block hash, we want the block height, and we also want the origin. That's it. We need these four things here. And if I run this code with this, and you can see for every block, we got the number, block height, we got the origin as well. So this is the first 10. Now, why only 3,000? Why not the latest number which you are getting in the Explorer? It is because if you go back to your terminal, See the indexing done. It is the indexing is done till 8,000 now, and this time if I fire this, should I say last? Enter. Okay, I guess it's working with the cluster, one cluster at a time. Okay, just fetching all the extrinsics. The only thing is we have to order by. Uh, we'll order by what? We want to order order by the block height, and that in this descending format run, and you can see this fetching the latest one. So this is how you index. And all this indexing is happening in your machine, in your Postgres database. So till this point, we were able to run this subquery project. So basically, we are indexing all the blocks on the Polkadot network. And now, from a long time, in fact, it's been a few hours, and continuously, my machine is indexing the subquery network. And you can see I have reached around uh, 0.5 million blocks, and it is still indexing more. OK, now if I go back to the page, and if I run the same query, this time you will get a different result. And you can see you will get a block height of this. The more time you spend running this, the more blocks you will get in the indexing. So this is fun, right? And you can change these things as well. Maybe you don't want to get the origin. You just want to focus on the block hash and height. Uh, you can query for that, and you will get the values. Right? And you can just uh, you can sort this by based on some other values as well. So what are the values we have? Maybe you can do it with the hash, uh, descending of hash, and you can uh, do that as well. So all these things are good, right? But then when I talked about indexing this on your own machine, let me show you something. So let me open my Docker, and let's see how many instances are running or how many images are running. So the moment I open Docker, you can see we have three images which are running. One is a GraphQL. So you were able to query this with the help of GraphQL because of this engine. Second is the subquery node, and third is the Postgres. So basically, you have this database installed on your machine in the Docker. And the way you can access Postgres is with the help of PG admin. So if you want to see the data, if you don't want to, that's fine. But then in this video, I wanted to show you how it looks like in the Postgres. So you can simply open PG admin. And if you don't have this software installed, you can just have to install this. Uh, you can search for PG admin. And the latest version is 4. So I'm using that. It will take some time to open. So this is opening. OK, now what's the password for this? Now, if you want to find the password, you can just go back to your VS code. And in this, in this uh, Docker Compose itself, yeah, this here. You can see we are using Postgres. And this is the password. So you can use Postgres as a password. Enter. And now you are in, if I'm not wrong. So you can just expand this servers. And OK, so server connected. So that's my machine, that's the database. Now, if you can see in schema, we have two things. We have app and we have public. So I want to go to app. And here, if I expand the tables, there's a table called extrinsics. This is what the uh, entity we have created, right? So 
So your entity name will be defined this name. So example, if your entity name is transfer, this will be transfers because it will be collection of uh, all this transfer. Okay, I want to see the data of it, right? So this looks good, but then I want to see the data. And the way you can do that is we can right click here and say, I want to go for the query tool. And what query we are going to use? We are going to use, okay, I already have a query here. So the query I want to fire is select star from extrinsic. And if I run this code, okay, it's not able to find extrinsics because it belongs to app schema. So we'll say app and run. Okay, you can see we got all this record. So this is your ID, this is your block hash, and this is your block height and origin. And I can simply sort it by block height. Or maybe you can fire the order query. So you can say order by descending order, and here we go. So these are the all the indexes you got till now. So this is 571852, and if I go back to my visual code and that's what the indexing which is doing, right? It's almost nearby. So basically it is, it is saving everything on your machine. What you can also do is you can build the subquery project and you can push it on the managed service provided by the subquery network. So that is one option you have there. Cool, so that's the thing. In fact, I would suggest you to change this password before deployment and you can customize everything from this file. So that's it from this video where we have talked about extrinsics. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about the handle events and call if, if we get enough time. Maybe we'll focus on handle event first. So that's it from this video. Bye-bye, everyone.